Welcome to Haltech Elite NSP Training Part 8. In this training tutorial, we're going to take a look at setting up our temperature sensors within our NSP software. So this is going to be things like air temp, or engine coolant temperature, or even something like engine oil temperature. Without further wait, let's jump in so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to be taking a look at setting up our temperature sensors for our Haltech Elite systems using our NSP software. This tutorial, we're gonna look at the two most commonly found temperature sensors that we always have to have present and calibrate it properly. That's going to be our intake air temp temperature sensor and our engine coolant temp sensor. Both are needed for fuel and spark timing calculations and they need to be calibrated right. As we looked in our previous tutorial, looking at our map pressure sensor, we know that that can affect our fuel and spark timing calculation. The same can happen here with our intake air or engine coolant temp sensors. So we're gonna learn how we check those sensor readings to make sure they're accurate. And then we're also gonna take a look at how we can set the calibration scale relative to the sensor that we're dealing with. Now my particular vehicle that I'm working with here is gonna be a uh, Toyota Supra with a 2JZ engine. The base file that we loaded into the Elite was a 2JZ specific base file. This was accounting for the stock 2JZ engine coolant temp sensor and it was accounting for some intake air temp sensor, most likely a GM three bar sensor. I am running an AEM Pro Series intake air temp sensor, so at the very least, we're gonna probably find that I have to go in and change the calibration scaling for my intake air temp sensor to make sure that that's accurate. Now, as we're talking about our intake and intake air temp and our engine coolant temp sensors, the calibration process that we're gonna be performing here, so how we're gonna be learning how to recalibrate them changing our sensor scaling will apply to things like oil temperature, differential temperature, transmission temperature sensors. Everything is going to be the same exact idea as what we're gonna be showing here. So I'm just gonna cover the, the fundamentals of how we set up the coolant temperature and air temperature, uh, making sure that they're in line. And then obviously from there, you can judge setting up your other sensors because there is exact same thing. So any other temp sensor is gonna be the exact same thing and same, same process here as we're gonna cover. So the first thing I want to talk about here is how we can tell if our air temp sensor or coolant temp sensor is out of calibration, meaning if we've changed the sensor from the stock sensor, we've changed it to an aftermarket one, um, if we've went in and deviated from a base file that we've uploaded, how do we tell if we need to recalibrate things or how do we tell if it's out of calibration? So right now I'm sitting in my vehicle and I have a Toyota Super here and I'm sitting with the ignition key powered on the engine off, so we're key on, engine off status. This is always way we wanna check some of our basic sensors. So in our last tutorial, we found that we always wanna check our map pressure sensor reading, key on, engine off. We know at I'm at sea level right now, it should be approximately zero PSI or 100 kPa, depending on the sensor scale you're at here. We can find that status right here. If we go down a little bit further, we're gonna find that we have our intake air temp sensor in our window right here. This is reading 100 degrees. If we go down a little bit further, we're gonna find our coolant temp sensor is reading 68 degrees. Now in my garage, it's approximately 65 to 70 degrees. So looking at this, I'm gonna say my coolant temp sensor scaling here is probably accurate, given that I have a stock Toyota 2JZ coolant temp sensor and the base file was configured from Haltech using that sensor, this is going to be accurate. However, we're finding the intake air temp sensor, that is not accurate, that's 100 degrees, it's way off. We're finding if the engine is cold, it hasn't been started, we should see that the intake air temp and the coolant temp sensors are gonna be relatively close to each other. They don't have to be exact, and in fact, oftentimes I find the coolant temp sensors read a little bit cooler than the intake air temperatures because they're submerged in a fluid, and a lot of times, for whatever reason, that fluid temperature is a tiny bit colder than the actual ambient air temperature. So, what we're gonna find here is that we are off, and for sure we need to go and recalibrate the intake air temp sensor. Now, what would happen if we didn't recalibrate this and we went through and tuned it with an incorrectly calibrated sensor. Well, we're gonna find in our fueling calculations, our main VE table here, this is based on an estimation of air mass. Part of that calculation bases itself around air density, which comes from our temperature reading. So we'll find if we have our air temperature sensor, let's say reporting about 30, 40 degrees off, this is going to be automatically saying at the hot temperatures, we have less dense air, we need to deliver less fuel and we'll find if it was the opposite here, so it was reading colder than what we were actually showing for the actual ambient temperature, um, we would find that it would over deliver fuel. It's gonna say, well, the air temperature is really cold, it's really dense air, we need to have more fueling delivered. So it would actually do the opposite effect. Now, in addition to that, in addition to having it part of our airflow modeling here, we also have some sub correction tables here. We have our fuel air temp correction, it's not necessarily needs to be used, but it's here if we wanna tweak things. 
If we're finding here that we're referencing something like 104 degrees, we're approximately 100, we're seeing here that we would actually reduce some of our fuel. We would take out a percentage of fuel from our main VE table fuel calculations. We'll find here that likewise, if it's cold here, it's gonna be adding some fuel. We want it to track accurately so it indexes our table here relative to air temperature. Now, talking about air temperature, Start. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.